So a couple physical properties of matter, density and specific heat, are pretty important. Um, both of these pieces of information can be found on the back of your periodic table for each of the elements. And each substance has a very unique density and specific heat, so we can use those to identify unknown substances. And so these examples, and then what we'll do in lab, we'll be working with um, elements, and so we'll just be focusing on that. But density is a ratio of two measurements, mass and volume, and it's mass divided by volume. We've seen that before. Uh, if you need help remembering that, mountains are above, are over the valleys. And so that's why M over B, uh, sorry, M over V, mountains over valleys. So here's our sample question. A piece of metal is found, and it has this mass, and it displaces this much water. So what is the density of the metal, and what metal is it? Okay, so we just have to take the mass of 177.17 grams, and we divide that by 22.5 milliliters, and we get 7.87 grams per milliliter. That's our density unit when water displacement is used to find the volume. If we measure and calculate the volume, our density would be grams per centimeter cubed but it's milliliters here. And so you need to look on your periodic table or you can look it up online and when you do find that the density of iron is equal to 7.87. So that is what that piece of metal is. For specific heat, that's the amount of heat that is required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by exactly one degree Celsius and our unit for heat is joules. You might remember that from ninth grade physical science. Water has a very high specific heat for substances compared to most metals and as it says here think of water heating up on a stove to boil. When you're heating up that water the water does not change temperature as quickly as that metal pot that you might have on the stove. It gets very hot to the touch very quickly. And we can use specific heat to calculate how much heat is absorbed or released by a substance and that equation is Q equals CM delta T. You can see that Q stands for heat in joules, C is the specific heat, M is the mass typically in grams and delta T is the change in temperature. We can rearrange that equation to figure out and calculate specific heat which is then Q divided by the mass times delta T. So here's our example. A pot weighs 340 grams, filled with water, put on the stove. Its starting temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, and 10 minutes later, the pot is 150 degrees Celsius. If I know that the pot absorbed that many joules of energy, what is the specific heat? So I have to place my numbers in the appropriate spot of the equation. My Q heat, 38,250. The mass of the pot is 340 grams. Delta T is the change in temperature between 150 and 25. So the difference is 125 degrees. Now you got to make sure you do the math properly. You either have to use parentheses for your denominator on your calculator or multiply that out first. So 340 times 125 is 42,500. So now the specific heat, when I do that, 38,250 divided by the 42,000, I find that the specific heat is 0 0.90. And that, of course, is using our sig figs, since there's only two sig figs in this measurement, the mass. So I have 0 0.90 joules per gram degree Celsius. That's how you say that unit. And when I look that up on the back of the periodic table or online, that is the specific heat of aluminum. All right, I hope that helped, and good luck with the lab and on the quest.